Till I'm dead and buried deep within a cemetery I will fight, never weary, I wanna be legendary A great year, we, we only had the two losses in the home and away season, we come into the finals and gee I tell you what, we had a little nervous moment against Brisbane in the first one didn't and we? And they were there, yeah absolutely. Right. Was, that was Robert Wall's last game I don't coaching think we, Brisbane Bears. Again I don't think we rated Brisbane that highly. Yeah. Um, that only just made the finals, that just scraped literally in. just scraped yeah. in. First played eight into yeah. eighth position. Yeah, and so we thought, oh, yeah. But geez, they, they, they gave we've got this. They gave us a run for our money, though. Didn't yeah, they? yeah right. I think one by two, ten, ten points. Cooter ended up we? probably saving the day a bit. We, uh, yeah, yeah, so we, we we fell over that line, which yeah. is good. But um, and then we're, we thought, oh, that probably woke us up a bit again. Was that, I was just going to say, was that the wake up call to say, hey, uh, focus yeah, again, because we we smashed North Melbourne in the prelim and then yeah. uh, made the grand final. Do you know what I remember about that prelim? God, that ground was muddy that day. Mm. Yeah, well, it was muddy in the, uh, the Brisbane game. Yeah, too. it was muddy in the Brisbane game too. Yeah. Yeah, but that, I don't know, it was just like... Yeah, because it was night as well. Yeah, yeah. It was we, a night game. Right. Like, yeah. I couldn't believe how muddy yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we well, got we, over that one we, then. We got over them pretty comfortably. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and, we, and we'd hit our straps again yeah. too. Yeah. We had a bit of a blip with Melbourne yeah. and then we, uh, with Brisbane and we started to yeah. play well again and yeah. away we went. Geelong won their prelim, and um, so we're up against the Cats. We'd only played them once that year, and scraped in by I think, yeah, three points at Princess Park. Yeah, because they had a good team. They, they had did. Good players, My word, they good did. So, yeah. so <laughs> going into the grand final, was there any? We were favourites, of course. Yeah. Of course, we um, we'd lost two games the year. Um, oh, a lot of people thought Geelong would knock us over. Yeah, oh, I think so, but not in our camp, though. Not in our camp. <laughs> um, so what was the? But there was, was expectation, the right? So. Mm. Uh, the feeling was, we have to win this. Can you imagine if we don't win this? You know, we have to win this. Yeah, yeah we've lost two game. games for the year. So not negotiable. We must. We win. have to win this, mm. and to do that, we need a good start. Yeah. And well, we that's what you would have learned out of the '93 Grand yeah, Final that right. you had a bad start against this yeah. and eight goals to two. A and Parker time. calls. It, you know, he always had the third quarter as a premiership quarter, but we needed a good start. To, yeah. You know, had, had, had and we did get off to a good. Start, and we got off to we? a great start. Yeah. yeah. And. We'll, Within the first ten minutes, we knew we were going to win. Well, I did. Yeah. Wow. Yep. I knew yeah. we, we'll win this. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But we did. Get I had no win. doubt in my mind after ten minutes that we were going to win. Yeah. Really. That yeah. probably sounds a bit big-headed and stuff. No, no. no. But we you just, just you just sense. I don't think I'd touch the ball at that stage, but I just. <laughs> 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 my team is going to win. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> I, we just spoke that's to Ange this week, and he said uh, he still wasn't comfortable. Like until like 10 minutes to go. He reckons like in the last quarter or so, and Dino, and Dino goes to him, mate, concentrate, we've still <laughs> yeah, got a yeah. quarter to go, you know? We're 90 points, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. 15 minutes to go and say, concentrate. Danny's, Danny was great like that. If, yeah. you, if you even looked <laughs> like you thought you were getting ahead of yourself, he's like, wait. <laughs> Yeah, um, and the, the, when I say, you know, after 10 minutes I knew, we were get, well, I, I had a feeling we were yeah, going to yeah, win. Of course. Yeah. It doesn't mean you take your foot off the pedal. No, 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 no. It, meant, no. it actually meant that we... It meant that you had a good feeling about good the way Good feeling. And, when you, we and when you feel good, yeah. you yeah. play better. Yeah, you do. And, you, and I, I, you know, I played okay in that game. So yeah, you was, did, um, you played very well. Uh, but I, I felt as though we were going to win. Do you yeah. remember who you played on? Yeah, Shane Brewer. Shane Brewer, he yeah. didn't do much for the day. And the first touch I got, I still remember my first main touch, I, th I think it was my first touch, um, and Shane led for a ball and a Geelong player, Geelong player kicked it towards him and I, I jumped in front of him and, and marked it. He grabbed me, he held my jumper and I sort of went like this with my elbow and I mm. went one, felt his cheek jaw there, one, two, and he still wouldn't let go, so I went bang! It's almost like, well Matt, I gave you three, yeah, I, I gave you three warnings, I gave you two warnings. That's right, three yeah. structure out. <laughs> three structure out. So yeah, that was my first touch. Yeah, yeah. I remember him, number nine for Geelong. Yeah, yeah good player. He was, good he was player. a pretty he handy half He ended up going over to Port and played some good games for Port as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. Were you involved in that um, tussle at half time? 
Yes. Did, did yeah. You jump into that? Yeah. I think most players. Yeah, did. we're all in it. Yeah. We're all in it. Because um, we're that? walking. We're walking Who out. Who started and, that? Was it Billy, Billy Brownless? Brownless? Yeah, <laughs> probably. That's right, Billy and Ange. And uh, because that was when the teams had the race together. Yeah. Yes. Side by side, and it was after that game that they changed. I think wasn't it that they end up probably yeah, splitting yes, splitting the. Uh, Not races a good idea up. to have but two teams going in side by side. But like that, that didn't happen as he was running off. Like that happened. I think Ange had the ball. It was on the boundary line, though, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and the so always happens. He got tackled. Yeah, yeah. But, all, but all the rest of the team were coming over there yeah, anyway yeah. because we're all walking off that yeah. direction. So, um, but but it, it always happens when over. someone's on a boundary line and there's yeah, a tackle yeah. and all of a sudden the halftime siren goes and it's almost like, well, what do we do now? Let's might as well hit each other. Yeah, yeah. How but it was a a bit of powder puff. It wasn't too much. But no, I know. But football does it, does it really pump they, you up? Don't they call no. it the footballer's no. waltz? Uh, it wears you out more than that. You come away from those things and you're exhausted, yeah. particularly wrestling on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all you're doing. You really can't. You, you can't, can't, hit, you can't <laughs> hit anyone or whatever. But And you're completely exhausted. Thankfully, it was half-time. So yeah. we're going to yeah. have a rest. Have a rest. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. The crowd loves it. Yeah. And no. when you're in the change rooms, it, it probably says, mm. oh, let's... Let's, yeah. ki- let's kill these yeah, blokes. Let's yeah. kill them. Yeah. Let's kill these Well, we had a pretty comfortable lead at half time. Yeah, in fact, a lot of people thought the game Game's over. over. It was technically not. For us, it wasn't over. And we, we, still we beat, again, play. we beat them in the third quarter. Yep. Um, and then yep. three quarter time, no. Well, oh, I can't well remember up. what Parker no, 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 was, was saying. We're well, was up. well up. And that was. Unbeatable lead. It was great. It was an unbeatable lead. And we knew yep. that. And so halfway through that last quarter, it was pretty much. Enjoy it. Running around, enjoy the atmosphere yeah, guys because we're we're winning yeah. by a lot and well, we were we were singing the song yeah like in the we're crowd very, before very the early. start very very uh, before the finish yeah yeah, before yeah. The very finish, early we in the last so quarter that, that well, we weren't good. quite singing the song but we felt as though yeah. we, we knew we were going to win so yeah. we're able to as long as denny sort of let us go a little bit <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> well interestingly <laughs> enough we were yeah we got up to 90 something yeah. points up in the last quarter yeah and then they kicked the last five goals <laughs> yeah. of the game and we won by 61. yeah that's because we were waltzing around yeah, enjoying right. the, what's what end of the yeah, yeah they were kicking goals and our blokes were like yeah, yeah whatever, whatever. <laughs> it's all you know, over when that siren rings then there's still an emotion there yeah, right? absolutely so yeah, what yeah. was it interestingly it was probably more relief than ah. anything Everyone says the same, and yeah. that's how I felt. And yeah. every player says the same. But you Thank talked heavens, about we, we have yeah. to win, we must win. We that must bit of win. pressure just gets released right. right at that time. Thank heavens for yeah. that. Yeah. You know? Because we were now we, we were, can celebrate. We were favourites. We were expected to win, yeah. Yeah. and we did win. Yeah. So you didn't get that super ecstasy that you yeah. should get when you sure you feel great. It's all awesome and fun and stuff. Sure. But can you imagine if you're playing for an underdog and you won? That's a, that's a bit of a different Absolutely. feeling at the so end, that's not the right and you place. just fall over the yeah, line. And yeah, that's uh, that's, yeah. that's just ecstasy, yeah. isn't it? And no, yeah. yeah, whereas we were relief yeah. and thank heavens. Because you're we expected to win, you're yeah. the favourites. Yeah, and you exactly. get over. In saying that, you know, after the presentation and stuff, I still feel you know, and we did the lap of honour. How good's that? And it was awesome. Now, one thing I remember, I thought, I wish I had a deck chair. You know, just put the deck chair out <laughs> yeah. and, and just, just soak all this yeah. up. You know, uh, that's because uh, yeah. all the crowd were going crazy still. Yeah. And, Everyone hung around. Did you have a bit of champagne out of the old um, yeah, I Premiership so. I Cup? I can't remember, but probably it was going in there. And yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was fun. It was a great day. And what about getting the medal put on you on the... How does that feel like? Yeah. I yeah, know, oh, you can't remember. I know, can't no. remember. I, can, I remember Deeney. The uh, Maldini. He, he tried to stand on the yeah. balustrade and yeah, fell and off. fell off. Yeah. <laughs> I think in both his premierships he did something. Yeah. He? And well, in the, 80, in, the in the 87 one, he swore because he? he said, uh, Desi and Mutz, you fucking bloody beauty, yeah, or something yeah, like okay. that. Yeah. And then, the, and other then the other one, he just about fell off the <laughs> yeah, dais. He nearly but, broke his neck. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I remember, I remember getting it, and um, our families were um, sitting on the other side. So I was facing the, yes. the, the uh, AFL members, and all our families were sitting on the other side. So I remember getting it and then turning to them and, turning and, to them and igno- waving to acknowledging them. those guys. Yeah, yeah. of course, because they're part of it. Yeah, exactly. Of course, how would they be feeling? Yeah, that's amazing. And that, like, half mm. an hour, they always say the half an hour, hour after the win is the best time yeah, it's for awesome. a footballer. With yeah, your mates. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, just, a sense of achievement, too. Yeah. You know, that we'd, we'd got there after... You know, and that was a, that was our aim. You know, from ninety started ninety three, and that was Parco's yeah. plan. You know, as you say before, we got the wobbles in ninety one, mm. cleaned out a 
heap of players, got some new players in 92, got some more new, and the young guys came up in 92, yeah. some new players in 93, topped up in 94, and then 95 it was, was the ready, perfect was storm, storm wasn't it? Was the yeah. the chemistry build, all came man, together. It's that build to get it was that, that build. Yeah, that's right. And, and you've got to go through a few experiences where you feel some pain and hurt from losing or... Yeah, that's right. That often so. drives that so. emotion, yeah, so yeah. that motivation, if you like, to the following year. And even through 95, well, the start of 95, people were saying we're too old and too oh, strong yeah. still. Because you know, mm. we went out straight sets before. So yeah. it was... Um, Very similar to the Geelong of last year, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. They're old, and you know. It's, and well, they did the same. It's 16 nonsense. wins in a row. It's absolutely nonsense. They're the best yeah. team in the comp. Yeah, that's Who cares it. how old they are? Yeah, yeah? that's They're right. That's brilliant right. team. Yeah? But we also had, like, you were old, but we had this nice little mix too, you know. Yeah, and Cooter yeah, were young. Cooter, Campo, just Campo Adrian Whitehead was yeah, really the, young. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rat, rats and uh, Brownie were. That was they early were 20s. 24. Yeah, they were like. Perfect I was 25. Um, Glenn Manton was still yeah. young then. Yeah. Yeah. Manton came in, yeah. So we weren't all old. They and weren't and all on and uh, but, walking sticks. But interesting, <laughs> the, the old, so called oldies. Mm. We're still our best players. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Brazzle, Brazzles, Diesel, Diesel, Sticks. sticks. Yeah. Spalding, Spalding, Justin Madden, Justin, Justin, we were Justin, man. He was like, oh, he was a superstar, wasn't he? Absolute superstar. Justin was thirty-four yeah, at was. that stage. Yeah, that goal. The others were so thirty-two. That, all, Diesel was his thirty-second birthday that day. Yeah, yeah. It was too. It was and he won birthday, the Norm Smith Medal. Yeah. <laughs> so chuck him in the. They're saying, oh, too old, line. too old, too slow. But yeah. all the yeah. older guys were our best players. They were leading the way. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Experience, yeah. man. Yeah, it's you can't beat it. That goal by. You know, Justin, when he kicks that goal, he runs in and he does, he 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 does that. Like, yeah. you know, it's like unbelievable, yeah. Yeah, so so um, uh, it was a comprehensive performance. Uh, you know, Sauce keeps Gary Ablett goalless. That doesn't happen too often. Yeah, that, uh, um, that know, really helps, helps when you've got you know the all Australian full back in your team, and mm. yeah, then they're probably the, one of the best centre forwards going around the game. Um, yeah. in sticks it's now moved to course. full forward and then Spalding and then one of the best players ever to play the game uh, just happens to be playing centre and we just move him into the forward just pocket just him in the forward pocket <laughs> <laughs> kick five goals very fortunate day that day, man. and another young up and comer that yeah. probably end up being probably you know, if, if he didn't hurt his knees he probably would have been considered one of the all time best players Absolutely. ever you know when he played there was that period where he almost won the brown low and then um it was at 99. Yeah. 2000 was 2000, when he really oh, that's brown. right. And he, then he did his knee. Um, that time there, if he wasn't the best player that ever played the From game. From 99 to 2001. Could do, unbelievable. He do anything. So I still remember I was playing deep. Uh, playing, we were still at Princess Park, I think. Mm. And um, we were playing Melbourne. And... Cooter was just weaving his magic from sort of the centre to full forward yeah. and just doing what he pleased. It was yeah. like an 18-year-old playing with 12-year-olds. Yeah. And he had my the ball opponent, on the string like a yo-yo. He did something. I can't remember what he did. And my opponent, I think it was Robbo, um, and he turned to me and said, did you just see what he did? <laughs> Russell, 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 Russell. Yeah, he's a good guy, Russell. He said, Macca, did you just see what he did? <laughs> I said, mate, he's been doing that all year. <laughs> well, do you remember he used to pick up the ball with one yeah, hand yeah. like that? I mean, and you could you ever do that? Run past a, a pack and yeah. pick up the ball with yeah. one hand. Yeah. Yeah, so it was like, it was like Spider-Man. <laughs> you could just like zoom in and keep running. So man. some of the stuff he did was just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we've won the flag to celebrate well. Oh yeah! Did you have a nice uh, long celebration time before you started yet another pre-season? Yeah, about a week. (laughs) Is that all? Well, a a solid celebration. I reckon you didn't miss one pub in Melbourne. No, we um, we we did, and we ended up at CUB as well. Caught a bus there, and that was a bit of fun. And um, yeah, we we had a lot of fun. Yeah, and um, yeah. Very funny because you got personalities like like Fraser and a few others that you know we'd go into a pub. (laughs) <laughs> and if they didn't recognise us, Brownie got up to the bar and said, hey, we've just won the grand final. <laughs> <laughs> we need free drinks for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. One thing about uh, Fraser, he's not yeah, yeah. backward in coming forward. Yeah, he told us a story he, when he, you went on an overseas trip and he rocks up at the airport, with Doggy his, Brown, yeah. with his, nothing. He did, no, he bought two things. Oh, what you? <laughs> he bought his visa card and his passport. That's, that's it. And right. that was it. Yeah. That's right. I'll just buy everything. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly and right. He, and you know what? He's not wrong, mate. Yeah, like, yeah, you just a, go there and get your stuff over there. Funny. Yeah. He didn't even bring a, 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 didn't bring a, a thing. A suitcase yeah. with no, it. Nothing. Nothing. 
just a what about toiletries and toothbrush and no, that? No. No. Just get it over there. Yeah, exactly. I think he thought he'd use the ones on the plane to, yeah. uh, <laughs> just to get a toothbrush and toothpaste on the plane. Well, back in the eighties when we were playing grand finals like eighty six and eighty seven, they went over to London and played a, an exhibition game. Did you do anything like that? Yeah, in we 95? played uh, in ninety four. We played over at the Oval. Oh, oh right. Um, okay. We we played Richmond and Crows played. West Coast. Okay. Okay. I think, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was 94. Was that all nice and tame, not like the Battle of Britain of Oh, no, very tame on field because, you know, they, <laughs> well, didn't, you they didn't want another spectacle like very that. Very tame on field. Oh, yeah, yeah, but off field it was a lot of fun. And I, luckily, well, not luckily, but uh, fortunately, my brother was travelling overseas at the time. He'd been away for a year and he just happened to be in London when we got there. So wow. I went out with him quite a bit and the other, a few of the other, you know, a lot of the other boys. Mm-hmm. Um, and the West Coast guys knew how to have fun, and the ga- the, the we we were there for about four or five days before we played, I think. And the day before the game, because it's only an exhibition game, so really the coaches are the only ones that really <laughs> worry about it. We didn't worry yeah. about. I don't even know that they worry. Yeah, about it too and much. so I went out with my brother for lunch, and he had, we had twelve or so something, all his mates that had been travelling yeah. with, and we had a huge lunch, and we had a m- team meeting back at the hotel at six o'clock. And so I was on the booze all lo- all day. <laughs> I was just going to say. Went back to the team meeting, sat right up the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sort of falling asleep in the team meeting. As soon as that's finished, go back out with him, with all those guys again. Yeah. And then I think I got home at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, and we had a 10 o'clock game the next morning. So and this is in London? This is in London. Oh, goodness. Yeah, so we had a lot of... And after the game, um, it was really cool because... Um, we didn't mix a lot with opposition teams back mm. then, unless you won, unless you're in the state team yeah. and all that yeah, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's right. Um, but we got to know, you know, a lot of the guys from West Coast. We clicked with the West Coast boys a lot, and we yeah. we had a lot of fun okay. with those guys. So it was it was good. Yeah. Had some good tussles with them back in those days yeah, we, too. We certainly did. And I think I mean, that's ninety five. That really, helped, two, yeah. two, I think that's I think part it was of the second it. last round of of the of the home and away season. That was the game where we knocked them over by a point yes, over there. Yes, that's right. And Spalding went right through Guy McKenna, yeah. if you remember. Uh, that, that big hip was that the shoulder. game where Main Waring yes. hit, the, hit the post in the la- in, in the oh, dying yes. seconds? And if he kicked that ga- goal, they would have yep. won. Yep. Yep. So you know whose foot that came off? Mine. Really? So I, I was playing on Mane at the time, and I, I was running right behind him towards the boundary line, and... He oh, ran over the bounds right. and he tapped it back and it hit my foot hit and went, foot out of went out of bounds on the full. So I was standing on the mark and the siren go with the siren go before he kicked it or siren just as he went kicked before it. Before he kicked it. Just before he kicked it. And I'm going, Oh no, oh, oh no. <laughs> and then he kicked it. And I looked over I never forget, looked over my shoulder and thought, Oh my god, it's going in. Oh my god, it's going in. and then it just turned a just bit much and hit the top of the post. <laughs> I'll what tell you what, that was a pivotal game. The West, game Co- West Coast versus Carlton at Subiaco, round 21, yeah, I, I 1995. It often gets replayed on Fox Footy yes. because it was such a great game. Yeah, I, I that was the one where Ricey kicked the, the winning goal at our end. Oh, yes. Right, OK. okay. I, I get confused because we had so many good tussles with him over there. Yeah. I can't remember which... And it was so many close games. I can't oh, remember which one, which highlight fit into which game. But oh, we had some fantastic games, yeah. especially over there against them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had yeah. some good ones at Princess Park too. Yeah. Now... This this could go on forever, man. Like um, that's right. We, we we'll put try and fast forward a little bit. Yeah, I want to fast yeah. forward into maybe some things. Just quickly, let's just finish off, and then and then yeah, you had a great career. You won Brown. You won uh, You won <laughs> best and fairest there. You had a pretty good career, and that you probably thought we were going to be in a lot more grand finals, but. Well, after '95, uh, as we spoke about, you think it's going to continue, yeah. you know. And I actually went um, to Brisbane in '96, stunning. Yeah. So I yes, that I, was, I was the other what one. I was going to say. So after winning the premiership, a, yeah. So that I, was unusual. Yeah, though. very unusual. I I, I went. But you to, went with um, Parko's blessing. Yes. Um, take my hat off to Parko again, and I went. I was, in '92. I finished. I okay, I was buying wool and driving the other side of Bendigo for three days a week and driving back to train and all that sort of thing. So I was doing sort of 800 k's a week wow. in the car and driving back and, and training and stuff. Mm. And it wasn't too conducive to uh, playing footy and I thought, and I was actually ended up falling asleep at the wheel half the time and I thought, I can't keep doing this. No. I always wanted to be a vet, yeah. but I hated studying at school and I didn't want to study after school and <laughs> I, I got enough marks um, to go into courses and stuff after school, but I didn't enjoy studying so I, I didn't worry about it. Then I said to Parko, I wouldn't mind being a vet, you know. Uh, and he said, right, okay, let's map out how you, you can do this. And I had enough marks to get into 
ag science at Melbourne Uni from my year 12 school, my, my year 12 mark. So yep. he spoke to the ag science guys for me. He he knew uh, the head of, of course, ag science, of <laughs> but I had enough marks to get in there yeah. anyway. So he said, look, Andrew wants to get in. Uh, Why? Well, he's got this these marks. What do you think? And he he's said, well, Premiership we, player. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is before the Premiership. So. Um, oh, was it? it was in 94. Oh, 94. And um, the end of 94, so going to 95, yeah, to study yeah. ag science in 95. Ah, uh, yep. And um, he looked at my marks and said, oh, you've got the marks to get in, so if apply through the proper channels and with your marks and all that sort of thing, and you should be able to get in. And, and I did, and I got in, and then I, to do VET, you need specific subjects to get to qualify because you have to do a year of science before you can get into VET at Melbourne Uni. Okay, yeah. And so I got into ag science, so I had to ditch all the ag subjects and do the subjects that enabled me to get into VET. Yep. So, and then uh, at the end of the year of VET, I had to have an average mark of 75%. Now, I hadn't studied since I left school. That was six years, seven years prior. Yep. And I'd forgotten how bit to study. Rusty. A bit rusty. And yep. so the f there were two semesters. First semester didn't go very well at all, and I ended up, you know, sixty-five percent average or something. And um, I thought, oh, gee, I'm not looking good here. And then second semester, so sort of things started to roll a bit, and I ended up going quite well, and I ended up with seventy-four percent. Yep. So seventy-four. I missed, so I missed, a, missed out on getting to vet at Melbourne by one percent. Wow. wow. So and I, during that year, I um, I said. I had a meeting with um, Parco, Goffey, uh, Cole Kinnear, and I think Colo was there at the time. Colo was CEO. I can't remember whether Colo was CEO or Goffey was CEO. Stephen Goff and Ian Collins. Um, and I said to them, sort of, this is about a third of the way into the season of '94. So this is my second year there, right? Yep. Yep. Um, I said, look, I want to. Uh, no, it's third, sorry, third away in '95. So yep. good, we're, we're having a good, good year. Third away in '95. So look, I've applied to go to vet in. There's only four vet schools around Australia: Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and Perth. Murdoch Uni over in Perth. Um, if I get into any of those, I'm going to go. Wow. And they said, yeah, yeah, no worries. Mate. Yeah, <laughs> was this for 96? <laughs> yeah, this was for 96. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, they said, yeah, no worries, that's fine. Uh, thinking there's no way he's going to get in anyway, <laughs> so that's all right. And so uh, guess what? Uh, Brisbane said yes. So Brisbane yeah. goes on a couple of things. You, you're experienced with animals and all that sort of stuff. And I'd had a lot of experience with animals on the farm and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. And, 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 and your marks as well. And so Brisbane said, yeah, they accepted me in. And I went back to... Same crew, Colo and Stephen Goff and uh, Cole Kinnear and Parco. I said, guys, I've been accepted into Brisbane and I haven't been accepted into Melbourne. And so then um, they said, oh, goodness. Um, I said, look, I want to go. And I said, oh, really? And, uh, <laughs> and Parco said, all right, well, let's, let's work something out here. And then he, he, spoke, he said, let me speak to Jack, uh, John Elliott, and... See if you can pull a few so, strings. See, so no, I was more around you. jigging contracts and stuff. Okay. And you know, he spoke to John, and then then John tried to go and pull some strings. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> John tried to pull a few strings, but it was all too late by then. What do you mean you won't accept it? Yeah, Big right. glass, you won't. He's missed out by this much. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, they'd already. Yeah. It was too late. If you'd done that. A year earlier, two, three months was, earlier, no, they okay. might have, they might have, might have, but it was too late because they filled up the quota for the Melbourne Vet School by that stage, yeah. um, and and John tried a few times and went. I think he might have gone a bit hard at one stage. From the feedback I got from the Dean of Vet School when I went <laughs> back to Melbourne, he said, hey, "John Elliot, I tell you." <laughs> anyway, I I ended up. Um, so I ended up going to you see. You mean you didn't go there with a brown paper bag for <laughs> him? <laughs> I really tried. So I went and saw John in Collins Street, and um, John said, after he said, Macca, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> he said, right, let's work something out here. We'll read you your contracts, we'll fly you down for the games you want to play, and we'll allow you to play as many games as you can because we want you to keep going. And so that's what happened. I went up to yep. Yep. Queensland, I spoke to yep. um, Parco and Cole Kinnear. And I said, guys, I'll do it, 
I'll play footy on the proviso that you ring me every Tuesday night at the start of match committee, and if I say no, don't pressure me. Don't try and pressure me into playing because I need to get good marks to transfer back to Melbourne. Yep. And that was my whole goal to transfer back to Melbourne. So to do well enough in that year at Brisbane to yep. then transfer, transfer to Melbourne Uni the following to, year. To transfer because okay. Melbourne have said Melbourne, although they wouldn't let me in that year, Melbourne had said. If you go really well, there's an potentially an opportunity. We can't promise anything, but there's potentially an opportunity to come back. Mm. So I thought, well, okay, well, I've well, got to do really well. Yeah, I need yeah. to do. I need to do well here. Yeah. And you know, I did okay. I mm. did pretty. I, excuse me, I did pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, shot off to Noosa a few times and in between <laughs> times and stuff. But and to their word, all they, part of the study. They were, exactly, course. they were true to their word. Colo, uh, um, um, Cole Kinnear would ring me mm -hmm. on a Tuesday evening every Tuesday I'd say, Maka, do you want to play? And I'd say, yep. And he'd say, right, catch a plane to be in Perth at this hour, because our plane's arriving yeah, then, we'll yeah, meet you there. Yeah. If I said no, he said, right, I, no worries, I'll speak to you next week. Bang. Did Can you I just say no? Yeah, yeah, I said no a lot, yeah. a lot of times, yeah. Can I just ask you, are you married remember. at this stage yet? Uh, yes, yeah, just I got, thought so. I got married in 95. In 95, during yeah. the premiership year? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good year for you. Yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> so you're married, so you went up there with Sam? Well, Sam stayed back for a little while, and then she joined me okay. in the middle of the year, and then she went back. Okay. Uh, the sort of, so yeah. she was there for about three or four months, and I was there for eight or nine months. Right, yeah. Wait, okay. People don't realise like, how sacrifices. tough that would have been. Like, yeah, it was. Uh, and and so training, training. And you wouldn't have known anyone, really? Well, you? thankfully, a, a really good friend of mine was living up there working. Okay. And he was living with four others, and he had a basement that I could stay in. So I stayed in his basement. Yeah. And he was just, we were just renting the house. And stayed in his basement. And he, he loved his sport as well, and he, he could play a bit of footy. And so we went for two runs a week. Okay. And we had a kick in the park. So together. you had a bit of a training We partner. had a kick in the park together. And that was it. Otherwise, it would so have been pretty hard. Training. That was training. my training. And then if I was going to play, so I end up playing 15 games, but big chunks of those were in holidays. So in holidays, I'd yeah. fly back to Melbourne yeah. and play four in a row. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would go, if I was up there, I'd probably play every third or fourth, well, probably fourth week. Yeah. And so if I was going to play, then I'd go out on the Thursday night and mm. train with the uni team yes. to, to do a proper training. And you know, f fair to say their standard wasn't quite to our standard, but sure. at least it gave me something, someone to run around with and, yeah, and yeah, kick. kick yeah. Would have been damn hard if it was just you on your own. Yeah, skills and all that sort of mm -hmm. thing. And then, because we're still a good team back at Carlton, um, we were looking like we we're going to play finals again. Of course. And Wayne Britton was the assistant coach yep. to Parco um, at Carlton, and his brother was coach of a team in Queensland. In right, Brisbane, right. So, about a month before finals, five he got five of the, his players to come out and do drills with me, okay, uh, once or twice a week, mm. uh, which got me going again, you know. And it was exhausting because you know they just kick it there and there, and I'd just be running back and forth and back and forth. And there's just no respite, and I wasn't that fit because I'd just yeah. been going for the odd run and stuff. Yeah. So they did that a month leading into the finals to get a, a bit more footy into me, mm. which was good. So, um, and then. I think our first final was a home game for me. We played Brisbane. We right? did. Yeah. We got smashed. And I played on the fo half forward line, would you believe? It was the first time I've ever played half forward at AFL level and I kicked a couple of goals. So that yeah, was quite yeah. funny. Was that the first? I thought that might have been the second one. Oh, was it? I can't remember. I can't I think remember. we played yeah. West Coast first. Well, was it West Coast there, first? Yeah, because I didn't go. I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember where they went. Uh, I think I went to West Coast, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. and then we came back. Would you to have summed up your year as being a bit patchy or. or oh, I was, hanging, I was hanging on for dear life. Were you? Yeah. 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 I, um, so it did affect your performance yeah, overall. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And I, I sort of played my role, mm. but oh, I, yeah. I didn't play well. Yeah. I just not was, to the standard you I, were having. Yeah, I was just there, you know. Yeah. yeah. And and I, I I said to Parco, I actually said two things to Parco before I left. I said, look, I didn't want to create any um, disharmony in the team. Right. And I said to Parco, look, if if you start hearing whispers around. Because I knew I was only going to be playing every third week mm. or so. I said, if you start hearing whispers around people getting upset that I'm coming into the team and kicking someone out um, that have been playing regularly that year, then let me know because I'll just I'll not play. Yep. Put my hand up and say, I'll don't, put my hand up and say, don't worry. Because I don't, didn't want any disharmony in the team because we had a good team still. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to upset that balance. Sure. Um, so, and I also said to Parquet, if I'm not playing well enough, Drop me. Yep. No, don't, don't, don't put me in. Yeah. And um, 
anyway, I must have been just hanging on because he every time they, they never dropped you. They never dropped me. No. It was always just you being rested because you weren't available. Yes, that's right. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So you still played fifteen out of the twenty five yeah. games for the year, including yeah. finals. Yeah, still great. That's yeah. still not a bad effort. That's a great effort. Well, we went out in straight sets in ninety six. Then we went through those. I guess uh, patchy years of 97, 98. Yeah, it was a bit of a changeover, wasn't it? Changing the guard. Definitely. Yeah. With um, Sticks and uh, Kernahan and Williams and Bradley. Brad's, no, Brad's, sorry, not Bradley. Brad's hung around a bit longer. Madden yeah. and yeah, uh, Justin, Spalding. Spalding, yep. Hannah, they all retired. Yeah, Mill and Bear and Tommy Alvin a little bit earlier. And, yep. Um, you know, so we had some really good players walk yes. out the door. We had some pretty handy players come in as well. Yep. You know, Sammy Hamill and Lance Whitnell and yep. that um, would have been you know, we had some really in. good talent coming yeah. in. Um, and then we we fought our way back to, you know, playing in the grand final. Again. And one of the best the game before that is I you speak to Carlton really players awesome. and outside grand finals they say it's the best t- best game they've ever seen. Isn't it funny how ninety nine again making a grand final? Off the back of not even making the finals at all the year before. Same as yeah, 93. That's right, exactly. 93, with yeah. 92 we didn't make it, we just failed. Yep. And again, 98, we had a, a good second half of that year after a very slow start, but we didn't make finals in 98. But then 99, bingo, we're in the grand final. Yeah, that's right, exactly. And, and we were underdogs. And I remember walking into the MCG at the start of the preliminary final against Essendon, and there were hundreds and hundreds of Essendon supporters lining up to buy a grand final ticket. <laughs> and it was right where we walked into the ground. Is that an insult and, to you guys? And we spoke about it. Is that, is that we, seem to be an insult? We spoke about it as players yeah. together, yeah. not as a group, but just individually. Yeah. Yeah. Cheeky, you seen those those yes cheeky buggers, you know? Yeah. And, uh, well, we, I said this story a couple of weeks ago, and I'll say it again. We went to that 95, same thing, seeing all the... Then when we were leaving and we'd won... Yeah. They weren't there, but the chairs were still there, <laughs> and I was like, I was in, I was in form, mate. I was yeah. grabbing those chairs, I was flinging them across them, and go uh-huh. home, you know. So it was, it was, yeah. just, it was the best day. I, it's, it's fun. I, I happened to find out that the Essendon events team had already made arrangements with Crown Casino to book the room for their grand final yeah. dinner. <laughs> that's how oh, cocky they were. I, we'd heard about that too, yeah. Being in the grand final. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Is but, that one um, of the Grand final, of course, but was that like our grand best. final before the grand well, final? Is that how you felt? Well, we, we we made a point of it not being, but it was mm. a super game, as everyone saw. Mm. And did that sort of squeeze the last bit of juice out of the lemon? No, you, I, I don't think it, I don't think it did. I mean, we we played well, and if you cast your mind back to the grand final of that year, mm. we actually played it right in that first quarter. We started we, well. We played. We had. Yeah. Way more possessions than that in the North Melbourne. Oh, yeah. We, we had our hands on it, but we scoreboard. couldn't score. Yeah. We just couldn't score. And they were, it took us, and so we had it for a quarter and a half. We were actually dominating, probably a bit too extreme, but we were. Um, we had way more play we're than the they. Better side, we were yeah. the better play side. We had m- way more play, which tells me we sort of didn't play our grand final in the, against Essen the week yeah. before. But then I remember the defining moment again in that game was when Corey marked that ball. Yep. And he was 60 out or wherever yes. he was. Yep. And, he it and it was the first opportunity they've had to score. And bang, it and went through. And bang, it went through and we've gone, oh, no. Yeah. And that was just before half time. And then Justin Murphy went down with a knee injury. Yeah, he Murphy was crucial went down. to our he was, forward line. He'd played well a uh, week before. And yeah. Yeah, and then they got hold of us in the second half, of course. Yeah. But you know what? We, we should have been well ahead of them in that first quarter and a half That's right. on the scoreboard. And you talked about missing opportunities. You know, at the end of the game, we had the same amount of scoring shots. Yeah. They had 19-10 and we had 12-17. Yeah, wow. Okay. And well, they yeah. won by 35 points. Yeah. But we never looked like winning after well, they got Not after half time. No. But if we'd, if we'd kicked We've goals instead of points in the first early. half, then it mm. uh, might have been a different if story. We would've, would've, if we could have, If, yeah. should have, could have, yeah. would have, didn't. Goals, Absolutely, man. and didn't. Which was yeah. unfortunate because they were red hot favourites and but it would have yeah. been great for us to take it up to oh. them again. You know? But what a great game the week before. It was a good game the week before. Yeah. You were involved in that yeah, one? Yeah, it was fun. That was great. Yeah, that was Where were you when the uh, Fraser Brown tackle was, was laid on Dean Wallace? Were you in the area? I was about the centre of the ground, so just 20 metres behind those guys. Yeah. You see, like, Wallace take off mm. yeah you think far out man out of all people to get the ball but yeah and what did you think of uh Cooter's, Cooter's last quarter well it was super wasn't it and um yeah, yeah that was probably the uh the pinnacle of his career in a sense mm. to yeah. win that game and you know if he didn't play like that we wouldn't have won no yeah. in the world 
um, you know, he's a Did you have a panic? Player. Like when Essendon came back hard at us in that third quarter after we, we had the ascendancy after the first half, they came and played them you know, really blitzed in that yeah, third quarter. Yeah, they did. But then that first goal, crucially in that last quarter, was Fraser Brown kicked one and got us to back under ten points behind. And I think that that gave us some, yeah, absolutely. Some We're still in range, you know. Still yeah. in, and so, you know, it's funny because it's it's a, while, a long while ago, and but with games that are close, you just think, okay, next one, gotta get the next one, gotta yeah. get the next one, gotta get the next one. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And uh, and then when the when you've got the ball, you mm. don't think about getting the next one. You just think about what you have to do. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, and even when the ball's in your position, in, yeah. in your vicinity, you just think about what you have to do. Yeah. yeah. You don't think, oh, you gotta get the next one. But when you're playing half back and the ball's up in the forward line, we just mm. think, gotta get the next you one. Get get the next one. Yeah. You know, you said about the grand final was relief, so that one was the ecstasy. Yeah, yeah. that was the ecstasy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right. The Absolutely. one point, you know, you weren't supposed Underdogs. to. Win. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Against, against you. The guys that were meant to win the grand final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that Which team win. did you hate the most? I'm going to use that word. Hate's hate a it. tough, uh, big word. The players like actually that. have that yeah, emotion about teams. Well, yeah. we did, yeah, absolutely. Because Parker had a real grudge with Sheeds. It's Essendon, yeah. So we, to be <laughs> honest, that was a team we did, dis- I disliked the most. Yeah. Essendon. Dislike, yeah. And um, they had some players that were really good players but got under our skin a little yeah. bit and got under Did my skin. Did they give you a bit of lip? A lot of lip. Okay. And particularly when I first came into the um, competition and one or two in particular got, gave me a, a bit of lip but I managed to let my footy do the talking so that was mm. right. And especially and, uh, the grand final 93 and they, they would have quickly Yeah that's right exactly. Rivalry, yeah. But by the end you, you you have such a healthy respect for each other. You know? Of course and, at the um, end of the day. But certainly Essendon through that period was our one main we, rival, uh, yeah, our, the one that we didn't like the most. Well, also two thousand, they got a hold of us, yeah, uh, a couple of times. Because remember that through that period, um, Collingwood weren't that good. That's no. right. So there was they were terrible. It wasn't the uh, ninety nine. I think they sank to one of their yeah. Lives so it wasn't the ha- a full on no. rival. Car- mm-hmm. Carlton Collingwood and rival. I've noticed that with the I call the younger people, you know, like those thirty year olds and all that. They all. Like they dislike, dislike, <laughs> they dislike us, and then where when you get our generation, yeah. we hate them. <laughs> uh, That's Collingwood. Yeah, and no, Collingwood, yeah. we hate them. Collingwood, it's like a to the bone, you know. Yeah, like yeah. I just wish nothing but misery for <laughs> them. You know? Like this week was the biggest week for us, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I see the generations. Yeah, you, know? you do. Yeah, yeah and yeah. It, it has a lot to do with how close the games are. Now, just quickly, can we talk about post that little? Um, dynasty that wasn't a dynasty yeah, around went, 99, 2000, went downhill quickly 2000. After that. We never won a grand final. Nah. We probably should have won one, but yeah. um, then all of a sudden the wheels fell off and we went through that um, yeah, so you know, first, first ever wooden spoon and yeah. the board was turned over and all of a sudden Elliot's not the president and yeah and uh, a few people few people left and we got and fined a million left. bucks and lost draft yeah. picks you know and yet 2003 you were one of the main leaders of the team by this stage rats had started off being the captain that year yep. got then got a season ending injury yeah, about half, halfway through, halfway through you, you took elbow. over as captain after yeah, that yeah took over as captain how did that come about and i mean you had an outstanding year you won the best and fairest yeah yeah um that uh, was ended up being your last season of afl football yeah it was um and so did, the, did the coaches come up to you and say look we need someone to take over you're the yeah man. i was assistant i mean i was vice you were the, the vice time. anyway okay. i was at vice at the time and you know Brits was coaching and um, in 2002 he was. 2002. Then he got sacked. So Pagan was the coach. Yeah, so Brits in 2002 was, he chose Rats as a skipper and me as vice. Yep. Um, And so. That's right, because Craig Bradley stood aside at that point. Bradley had stood aside. Yeah. And, um, you know, Rats is a super, super player. And so. As a th- as a group, you know, Brattles, Rats, and myself, we were sort of the main leaders of the yep, crew. Yep. And we didn't have a great team, you know. We were playing. Uh, Silvani had retired at the yeah, end of two thousand. Yeah, lots of people had retired. Yep. And, um, you know, the likes of Sammy Hamill had gone off to yep. Saints and yeah. all, that, all that type of thing. Yep. Um, and so you were the three main ones at Campo, probably. Yeah, and then Campo went to Essendon. Remember? Yeah, but um, that two thousand two and three. Yeah. I, think, I think he was that, actually there. that was after. Yeah. 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 Um, but we still had some good players yeah. floating around. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, uh, Adrian Hickmont was there, and yes. um, a yep. few others. And, oh yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And we had an okay team, but yeah, we were certainly not as good as the other 17 teams in the competition. Mm. So we ended up winning, uh, ended up finishing bottom, which was uh, pretty embarrassing to be honest. The first ever Carlton team to yep. do that. And, that was in 01 or 02. 02. Yeah, and, and we had an enormous amount of injuries in 02. We did. Kuda was injured pretty much yep. the whole yep. year. Yep. Uh, Lance, Frank, uh, Lance, Frank, Lance Whitner was injured yeah. for a big chunk of, of that year. Yeah. Um, two super players. Do you and, think uh, Britain was hard done by to lose I think his he job? was. So, did you enjoy the way he coached? Yeah, he, was a, he had a really good um, knowledge of the game. He did, yeah. Well, um, everyone says that, yeah. Really good knowledge of the game. I reckon his people skills could have improved and they would have improved as he got more opportunity to do that um, but he had a super knowledge of the game and I, uh, he was a bit stiff because we had awful lot of injuries that year absolutely and we f you know obviously didn't finish very well but we mm. actually played some decent fo so, yeah, okay footy at Along times at times and then the following year 03 we actually got all those guys back you know Lance Whitnell and Cooter and yep. all that and we actually didn't have a whole heap of injuries and yet we still finished second last second last we we probably played worse that year for the for, certainly for the list we had in yep. 2003 2003 yeah, than yeah, what we did right. at 2002 that's that why was, I think how did you find Pagan coming in did you uh, uh, was the it was, a, it was, it was one the, of the senior players it was the wrong decision right yeah. wrong decision uh, I it was a last-ditch effort by John to keep his presidency he yeah. wanted to get the best coach, the, the one that was considered the best coach in the I league. Agree, I agree with you. Um, yeah. To save his presidency. It was, he was a, I think everyone knew he was already done by then. Yep. Um, so he got Dennis in. Dennis had coached very, very successful North Melbourne teams. Very, very experienced North Melbourne but teams. But he grew up with those teams. And he, he? he grew with those from under-19s, right? He so coached right. them in under-19s and then became the senior coach. So he had a great yeah. relationship yeah. with them. Yeah. And so it was, it was the wrong coach for the wrong time. Yep. You know, and not that Dennis was a bad coach for us. It was, no. I just feel as it was a, it was the wrong coach at the wrong time. Yeah. Yep. Um, he he had he grew up with those North guys. He'd been coaching very very experienced players. So there was no chemistry there. And between he was him and, and Dennis and was old school, right? Yeah, he was. And this when we had a lot of young kids in the team. Dennis was really old school, and the young kids. Oh, here I am calling young kids. Are probably well, ten, no, but ten, years 19, 20, ten, yeah. ten years younger than me. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifth, twelve years younger than me. Yeah. Um, and their mindset had changed a lot. You know, they they didn't perform when they got yelled at. They performed yeah. when they had a relationship with and people. And they got encouraged. And they got encouraged. And so it was just the wrong. Dennis is very much. The wrong, he wrong himself time. grew up under the Ron Barassi style oh, this, of fire no? and brimstone. Absolutely, yeah. fire and, and brimstone. And that's the way he was as and a that's coach. The way he was, absolutely yeah. was, and that's the way he was as a coach, and it didn't work. And no. unfortunately, like times, times change. Times change. Know? Times change. We, yeah, as probably the same reason why Mick Malthouse didn't quite work when he when he came. Maybe, out. yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, different to, different people. Uh, for that's different right, times. and you, you see the coaches. Now that coaches have evolved and they understand that if unless they have a relationship with a player, yeah, yeah, you can they can be the best player in the world, but they're not going to play for you. You know, they they're not you're not going to get almost the, that manager type. You're now, not going to get the best out of them. That's probably no. a better way to say you, they're still going to play for you, but you're not going to yeah. get the best out of them. And and so and you've got to manage each player differently, don't you? Absolutely. Someone maybe yeah. needs a and whack. It's, and it's not yeah, it's not whacking them all the yeah. time because they get the players get they get judged every minute of their oh, life. I know, and that's you know? the other thing. Which too. can be really mentally draining for them. So yeah. if you can if you can somehow harness their confidence mm -hmm. and, and promote their confidence and that, that you'll get a and lot of that's better. true, because in your days, like there wasn't the scrutiny of like these days, like every minute. Every minute, because it's full time now, it's right? It's full so, time, yeah. Uh, but that was that pre that was that transition from two thousand one to two thousand three, that was our transition into full time. Yeah. So we were full time by two thousand three. And but so I saw the whole yeah, uh, transition yeah. process. Well, yourself, Brett Ratton, um, Brattles had already left at the end of 2002, and so had Silvani the year before. So yeah, it was really Brownie. You two. When did Brownie go? Is it no, he, year went, before? he went it, a couple of years couple earlier. Years before, yeah. So um, it was really only yourself and Rats, along with uh, Campo. Um, Hickey, you know, Lance Whitnell and Adrian Hickmont maybe that made up the, the main senior core group yeah. in 2003. Um, did you guys have any conversations amongst you as we, we need to talk to Pagan about the way he's coaching this team or uh, did you ever have any dialogue with him about uh, his style? Yeah we did, Yeah, not as a group, um, we spoke about it internally about the way he spoke to some players. Yeah. 
Um, Could you see that it was having a detrimental oh, effect absolutely, on him? Absolutely, absolutely. He couldn't see that? He couldn't see that. He got reminded by one of the players, um, and oh, no need to discuss what was said, yeah. but yeah, he got reminded by one of the players that that wasn't the right way to go about mm. it. So, um, Did he try to change? Um, well, I only had him for a year, so oh, I don't know. After that, that I, I left mm. after that, yeah, so um, I'm not sure. Well, that. you won the best and fairest in 2003. Yeah. Yeah. You went out. Well, you went out on a good note in that sense. Yeah. I mean, you sort of went out at the top of your game. I did. I was playing. I was You're playing, playing quite well. Quite well, you know. I, I, but you felt like that's it. I'm done. 33 yeah, years of age. I wasn't enjoying it. You weren't enjoying oh. it. It was simple as that. I was. I. I'd already graduated as a vet. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I. I wasn't enjoying it. We we're getting pumped by yeah, you know, 100 know. points every game and yeah. it, it's not fun no. and so I thought I don't need to do this anymore yeah. um, so I, Good way to go I still out remember too. we played North, Mel mm. North Melbourne at, at uh, I remember too at uh, Docklands Docklands we our last smashed. game we got smashed oh, that was, it was a record was losing like 100 and 125 points 10, or something, 20 or something. Yeah. I think you'll find that that was a record losing was margin yeah. for Carlton and so I, I was on my haunches at mm. the end of that game just thinking I can't do this anymore yeah and Steve O, Arch, um, I can't remember who else, all came up to me and said, Mackie, you've got to go again. I said, Did they? Yeah. I said, Arch, I don't think I can. I'm, I'm cactus, you know. I can't, I, this is mentally bloody draining. Yeah. I don't think I can go again. He said, oh, you have a rest. I reckon you should go again. Who's Arch, sorry? Glenn Archer. Glenn oh, Glenn Archer, Archer. From, from, North from North Melbourne. So I'm talking about the again. opposition coming. Oh, so you're talking about Anthony Stevens Anthony and Stevens Glenn Archer. And Glenn Archer came up to me after the game when I'm on my wow. watch saying, you've got to go again. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They said that? Yeah. But you thought, no, I'm done. And I thought, well, I'll see. You know, I was completely shot by then. And then I went overseas um, for a while, trying to clear my head, la la la. And yep. You know, we're talking, okay, if I did come back, mm. what would it look like, la la la. And, and then I, I actually met Dennis at um, Paragon in, in Carlton. And okay. uh, this is really the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And yep. uh, I just wanted to hear his view on whether I'd come back or not. Yep. And uh, what I took out of the meeting, now it, you go to meetings and you hear what you want to hear, right? What I took out of the meeting was a conversation around, I, I'd hate uh, Dennis telling me, you're 33 years old, I'd hate to see you ending up in the twos halfway through the year in the pouring rain and not enjoying your footy. I Is that what he said to you? And I, and I thought, oh. hang on here, I've just won the best and fairest. Yeah. And you're telling I'm me a 33 year old, I've just won the best and fairest, I'm captain of the club. <laughs> and, you're think, and you're saying you know, you'd hate to see me playing twos. I thought, geez, I'd have to have a fair fall because yeah. we weren't the best team in the world. Yeah, you know? that's right. But do you know who I think he had a very similar conversation with the year before? Uh, don't know. Who wanted to go again? Brattles. Brattles. Quite possibly. Yeah. Because Brattles was ready to go. He was yeah. training, he'd done all the pre-season, the whole bit. Yeah. And then he announced his retirement because basically mm. Dennis had had that sort of conversation. Yeah. I think you'd better now, off to go now. Dennis might oh, Mind you, Brattles was 38 going on 39. That's right. But yeah. regardless of his age, he was as fit as anybody. He was still a good player for us. And we weren't a great team. So... Yeah. Um, I walked away from that meeting thinking, mm, okay, that's a bit deflating. Mm. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll, maybe that's made my mind up for me. So uh, anyway, long story again, short. Again, it wasn't exactly play. encouraging. So well, no. Even as a senior player, you need encouragement, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely you do. A lot Definitely. of people think that you, know, you need to put 80% of your time into the 80% of the young blokes and all that. But it's actually your top you tier need to of make players sure that you've got to put time into them too, you don't you? you know, when you're leading sure a group the, of people. The good guys are feeling, no, work. feeling good about Your it. Your best yeah. players yeah. need yeah. to feel like you've got time for them. That's Everyone right. needs a bit of love. Yeah, it doesn't right. matter Everyone. how good you are. Yeah, or, or right. if we See, if he had said, in hindsight, if he had said like... Oh, no, we want you, mate. You, yeah, mate, mate. You've got to play. You've got to play, mate. We need the captain. That that could have maybe... Maybe, yeah. maybe. It, it wasn't. still wouldn't have been a definite, but it might have been a maybe, yeah. Was your relationship with him... Until that conversation, was it was it okay? Was yeah, it strong? It was, was it was it? It was sort of nothing it was much. No, it was fine. It was, it was okay. okay. Yep. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Mm. I think he might have been looking to renew the team too. I think, I think he so. must have sensed as well yeah. that some of the senior players weren't warming to him because we've spoken to some of the younger blokes that came along during his tenure at Carlton yeah. and they sort of said well no he gave me my start and you know I've got nothing yeah. Yeah, but good to say about Dennis. Guys like Brad Fisher and guys like yeah, that. Yeah that's right. They yeah. 
they knew no better. And they came in and he was and the coach. I, I think that right? probably answers your question, Rocco, around, you know, did he change along the way? Mm. And I think yeah. he probably would have. He was have. trying to yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, I think mm. so. He was smart enough. Yeah, he's yeah. a smart guy, you know, yeah, absolutely. Right. And he's, but it's a, I think, yeah, I think Glenn Manson coach. didn't didn't want to him because no. he brought in Nick Martin and all of a sudden Manton yeah. was left out of the team. And, oh, you know, know, some of these yeah. guys were the ones that, that didn't gel with You're always going to get that, though, aren't you, when you're not when you're not getting dropped and stuff. But Of course. Anyway, I did Maybe the senior player are more resistant to change as well and, and you know what do you think so coaches get judged on wins and losses right of course right. and guess what you need a good team to win yeah. yeah and if you're not a good team you lose yeah, that's yeah. Right. and all of a sudden that coach gets judged <laughs> on that yeah <laughs> well he wouldn't have enjoyed kinda, we kind of yeah. went been going through that at Carlton now, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Like the losing and you get judged. You think, oh, all of a sudden, hey, Fossey's terrible. Yeah, and and then we're, he's, he's always a genius. <laughs> now <all> sudden, <laughs> easy, genius. guys. Just calm down. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It. Well, I mean, I don't think Dennis, Dennis would have enjoyed uh, being near the bottom of the ladder. Well, he, 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 he was and used of course, to we had our, our draft picks removed from us as well. Yeah, and he didn't know about that. No. So no. when John was speaking to him, there was no he, word he had about no idea salary cap breaches. That they were under investigation yeah. and, and that might happen. Yeah. And so he's he's rolled in thinking I'm gonna get two first round picks yeah. into a wealthy club and all of a sudden he's got no first round picks. We've finished on the bottom of the ladder. And we've been fined a million bucks. We've been fined a million bucks. And we can't pay it. We can't pay first round picks. Did we have any picks that year? Yeah, guess who our first pick was oh. in two thousand and two? Simo. Simo. Yeah. Number forty five. Yeah. Simo. Yeah. But we had uh, Wells and, and Brad Goddard. Fisher came in at about we seventy six or something. Wells and, Wells and Goddard. Wells and Goddard went to North and, and St Kilda yeah, instead. Yeah, but they were they were going to be both at One Carlton. Two, yeah. yeah, and I think uh, Brent, I think Brendan Barrick for Carlton. Yes, he time, was. He was a Carlton yes, supporter. His family was. Yeah, and so to put Wells and Goddard in that team would have been huge. Big know, difference. Huge. Yeah. yeah. So Dennis felt cheated so out Dennis, of a Dennis good gig. Dennis topped a bit of a raw a bad gig. No, Yeah, that's right. All of a sudden. You've got a young, up-and-coming team mm. with the two best kids in the country coming into your team to, mm. oh, Christ, you've got the same team that yeah. came bottom the year before. <laughs> no, and, nothing to look for. And yeah. your club's in the doldrums. Yeah. Yeah. And he's come off 10 years of success at North. Yeah. So he he was, he was found it, I would have, would have thought he would have found it really tough. No, it was yeah. tough. It was tough. Look, it was tough for it was hard. everybody. Yeah, that's Supporters right. too, like just yeah. everybody. It was just I think like, you made the right decision. You went off, uh, you know, as a, as a best and fairest, I'm you were the club the captain, sense, you went off on yeah. your terms, no yeah. one kicked you out. Yeah. And uh, it, was a, it was a good decision. Yeah. Now, you've, you've since gone on and worked at the AFL in the match review panel and, and, um, and other laws areas. Laws of the game and all that sort of uh, stuff. Laws of the game, committees. And then um, back at Carl. And then, yes, of course, you came so back to Carl. when you went back at Carl quickly, are we... Well, mate, this, this is, is going to be a part one yeah, and part two. Yeah, right. no, no, just quickly, uh, you were were you football director or what, what were you? Yeah, I was head of footy. So um, I was going to ask you about that. So Brad Lloyd's role now, yes. what Brad does now. So, so how, I just want to know, on. how important is that role? It's and what's important. involved in that role? So, That's what I'd like to know. So you, it's, an inter- it's a really interesting role in the fact that you've got the CEO yeah. and then you've got the executive team of... Um, the administration, so yep. you know you. So uh, who's have, that now? You have so you have commercial, and you have have footy, and you have finance. All right, yeah. Uh, Under the CEO, you've got it, about five or six general managers me, and membership, right? Yeah, so right. membership, sort of okay, commercial so operations. There, yeah. yeah, so that's one sort of, of five football. pillars, and footy is one of them, right? Mm. So you you sort of, and footy is a big part of the <laughs> cr- football <laughs> club, right? So you're pretty much you and the C- almost the two I C- you and the CFO really. are the two I C pretty much, but then you've got a thing called the senior coach. Yeah, and the se- the senior coach is very influential. Of course, um, and so there's that dynamic of who reports to who, and that needs to be really clearly spelt out. And if the senior coach is reporting to the CEO, that leaves you. Then out. all of a sudden he's up on that level as well, and so he's not answerable to you at all. But, but why should that happen? Oh, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. But it happen. happens a lot. Doesn't it does, it? and it happens. When I was there, which was a yep. which was a real downside, I, I felt. Right. Um, because then you then you're a toothless tiger. Yep. Because coaches, you know, I'm mates with a lot of coaches, right? Yeah. But th- they uh, they have got a healthy ego. Their yep. way is always right. Yep. Just ask them, and they hate being told. Of course. By a general manager. The other way around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course. So it's and you. The, the role for the general manager of footy is to have a really, really, really good... Re- it's, su- it's super important you have a really good working relationship with that 
person, with that coach, that head coach. If you don't have a really good working relationship with that coach, then this coach goes straight to the CEO about everything and doesn't Include, doesn't respect doesn't, your authority. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't include you and respect your authority. So even even I think if they are reporting to the general manager of football, then you'll still have some issues. I think if or you'll still have some issues if they don't have a healthy respect and a healthy and you don't have a healthy re working relationship with that, with yeah. that person. Yeah. They'll they'll bypass you and go to the, the CEO and what about if the senior coach even goes even higher than the CEO and has a good working relationship with the president? Well, that's that exactly the same sort of scenario. So, um, in fact, that's what happened under with Ratton and Stephen Kernahan was the president. Yeah, well, that, and those, yeah. these two played in the '95 premiership together. Yeah. They would have been talking to each other all the time, wouldn't they? Possibly, possibly. Um, so, when you were there, what was the year that you joined as the general manager of football? Uh, 2012, started 2012. So that was Ratton's last year. Ratton's last year. Yeah. So, so were you? Rats have been talking to me for a number of years about coming back to help him out. Mm. Yep. Um, and now that was when you took over from Stephen Ick. Yes. Is that's that right? right. Yeah. Because I think. Right. There wasn't a good relationship there. No, there wasn't, and it's really important there is a good relationship yeah. in that yeah. in that um, in that role. It was almost like this place is ain't big enough for the both of us. And yeah, I'd, I ain't going anywhere. From what I can gather, it wasn't a great relationship yeah. there, and that's what sort of end up being mm. breaking down. And you know, what mm. if they keep the coach? Mm. General manager of footy has to go. If they don't keep the coach, then general it's manager. The other way footy, yeah, that's right. Um, so did you work okay with with Brett Ratton? That yeah, year? absolutely. Yeah. And I played I played a lot of footy with Rats and, yeah. and consider him a really good friend. And um, so we had a great working relationship, and yeah. we could we could give each other some good honest feedback. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, which is what you need do to do. Do you think he was hard done by getting sacked at the end of 2012? I do. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Because we had another year, almost like 10 years earlier, 2002, you spoke about all those yeah. injuries that led to a wooden spoon. In 2012, we were expected to maybe make top four. Yeah, certainly. We ended up slipping out of the eight, yeah. but gee, we had some injuries. Yeah, we had some injuries. But we still won 11 games. Yes, we did. So, you know, the was that team's going into the finals this year. This. You think the Malthouse decision was made? Before he was sacked. Before he was sacked. I think they would have. Because he was I think available. They, I think they would have known that Mick was a if ready. Yeah, they would have known able. he was available. Yeah, that's right. Reading, willing, and well, able. Don't forget, Greg thought. Swan was the CEO. Well, that's right. And he Greg knew was, Greg from Greg was with. with Look, um, and, I, and I'm going to answer this. Mm. It was the wrong decision because I, even when you speak to other players, they say sometimes it takes a while for the team and the coach to bond, and, and they were. They were just about there, yeah. And then you take away one piece of it, that's right. And you yeah. kind of start again. Yeah, and well, we had you, some good you years under. Come back, and then you've that. got to do it all again. Then yeah. you come back. We played final series for three consecutive that's years right. before. Yeah. That. And Rats is a super so why football didn't, brain. Why didn't the, the hierarchy of the club say, "Well, hang on, let's give the guy a break"? We've had all these injuries in 2012. We've still won 11 games. We've only just missed out on the finals. Pressure. Give him another year. Well, I think it's expectation that, ca yeah. that Carlton should have been in the finals. The typical Carlton and, uh, expectation. And they probably. weren't, and so that was... And we've still that, got that now, haven't And we? probably, Rocco, the fact that they knew that they could get Mick. Yeah. And that and probably probably what tipped You've got to, You've got to jump, or as we might lose. So yeah, we're sold right. to the board, probably by the CEO. We've got the right team, we just need the right coach, and here he is, he's available over there. I wasn't privy to it, so yeah, I'm not what sure. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, no, it's, um, it's tough. It was tough on him. It was tough on... I can only talk about supporters. It was tough on us. Yeah. Even though after he, after mm. Mick got appointed, like it was tough before that, but after he got appointed, I think we warmed to it, and then we thought, all right, yeah. now we have got... Like the best yeah, coach, but really then looking back coach. after a few years, you go, oh. So you were still mistake, the, you know? the general manager of football right through the Malthouse years, yeah, 13, yeah, 14, 15, yep. and into the Brendan Bolton years? Yep. When yep. did you leave that position? Uh, end of 2018 season. 18. Yeah, so that was the, a really hard season. That was another was wooden spoon year. Uh, I can't remember what 18. Finished, yeah, we did. We only had two wins for the oh, season. Oh, that was the two win season. Yeah, we had one tough. in the first half. I think we had one win in the first 11 games and another one win in yeah, the second 11 games. Yeah, it was a games. really tough. Uh, and then one uh, win out of the next 11 games in 2019, and that's when they said that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. Three out of 33 is not good. And, enough. you know, I knew that, that they, they needed to start winning some games in 19, otherwise Bolts would be out there and yeah. gone in a heartbeat and that's what ended up happening and uh, you know it's a, it's a really difficult environment I, you guys are you know super keen supporters and stuff and mm. see it from the outside and, and you've got a bit of a taste of inside but a lot of guys see it from the outside it's it's a very very hard environment to work in when yeah. you're not winning 
yeah, the scrutiny. Especially when you're not winning, yeah. When you're not winning, it's when fine. you're winning games, when everything's, winning games, fine, everything's yeah. fine, and, and some cracks get covered yeah. over and things. When you're losing, you're working twice as hard yeah. and getting nowhere, and yeah. it's it's it can be very very draining on, on everyone there. It would be pressure. Yeah, like enormous pressure. Well, oh, yeah. Let's talk about those two relationships. Firstly, Malthouse, you were there for the entire time that he was there. Yep. What was your relationship like with yeah, him? Did good, he respect your authority and your position? I had a or? good working relationship with Mick. Or yeah. did he just go straight to Greg Swan? No, you know, he was respectful. Sort of and, uh, the, of course, Mick had a great relationship with Mick, uh, with, yeah. uh, with Swanee. Swanee. Yeah. And Mick reported to Swanee. Swanee wanted, to, wanted him to report to him, yeah. which, which made it difficult at times. Um, but I, you I, managed to work okay. Yeah, we, we worked all right. And I, I respected Mick. Um, yeah. And Do you think he was harshly dealt with? Again, it's, it comes back to win-loss, doesn't yeah. it? You know? It um, always comes back to win I reckon he lost the players. In those first eight rounds, I mean, we were having so many devastating losses, including that game that he broke the record yeah, right, for how many oh, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got smashed by Collingwood that night. That would have been yeah. a devastating loss. Yeah, but and it, then we kept losing. It was devastating in a big for Mick way. too because he he really wanted to put, yeah, yeah. put a good foot forward against That's the what opposition. I mean. yeah, devastating yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah. As much as anybody, right. but. Yeah. I think the writing was on the wall, but and he started blowing himself up. Yeah, really, I think he, he started going on radio yeah. and starting to say things about the board. And, and he should, apart yeah. from Carl going down, he wanted to be he wanted to be sacked so that he could get his money and run. Yeah. Oh well, it just didn't, it certainly didn't work. And out then Bolton, who was a whole new, you know, brand new, untried coach. Yeah, untried. And um, how do you reckon that went? Do you reckon that was the right decision <laughs> for our? For well, it didn't go well on hindsight, but. You know, I, and did you work well with him? Or yeah, I did. I, I did. Again, he didn't report to me. He reported to the CEO. Which really? I, I think it, I th think, still think that's a mistake in, in the football department. Um, so Stephen Trigg was the Yeah, Trigg, he was there. And I had a CEO. super relationship with Triggy. Really good relationship with yep. Triggy. Oh, he's another uh, South Australian, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it sounds like you're that position there. It's a bloody tough position. By well, the you're looking there. after the high-performance team. Yeah. You're looking after the recruiters. You're looking after the coaches. All except for the senior coach, that, and you're looking after the senior coach in a, yeah. in a sense. But if he's not reporting to you, then it's you sort of let him go. Yeah, that's right. And, and even if he is reporting to you, the, the senior coach has so much responsibility of that football club, right? Yeah. Um, whether well, the we don't win, he's the one that's got the it's, spotlight. It's not on about him, the right? CEO. It's no. not about the general manager of footy. It's yeah. about the coach. Well, as soon as Carlton started yeah. losing this year, where did the spotlight yeah, go? Straight, straight on to the Michael coach. Boss. So they have so much influence mm. and so much responsibility that they need to have some pull, you know, and they need to be able mm. to do things the way they want to do it. Yeah. Um, so True. they live by the sword and die by the sword. Yeah. Pretty much the coaches, don't they? Can I ask you just quickly, when we had our review a couple of years ago, remember when the club said we want to have this big football department review and... Mm. Next minute, you know, they sacked David Teague and they sacked the whole string of assistant coaches and even the CEO left. Yeah. Now, the general manager of football, Brad Lloyd, was spared. Yes, yeah. Can you understand why that would be the case when he's actually technically in charge of the entire failing yeah. football department? I'm, I wasn't I've, privy to I've the review. I've always wanted to know the answer to that question. I wasn't privy to the review. It was well after Can I you left. think of any reason why he might have been spared? Uh... Is it because he's got a great relationship with everybody there? He must or? have kept his head down, and uh, or, or he was, or he was part of the review. I don't, I don't know. You know <laughs> yeah, Brad's a good bloke. I don't know how it mm. works now, yeah. but um, because if you're just simply looking at responsibility and accountability, that's right, Everyone exactly. else was made accountable, yeah. but him. Correct. Yeah, that position yeah. and the board, of course, to take Brad away. <laughs> but that that position is is accountable for running the football department. Yeah. You know? mm. And. Interesting, isn't it? So everyone else will lose their job, and yeah. the, the guy running the whole department got to keep his. Yeah, it's sort of the highlight of it. it certainly highlights the fact that how much. Uh, Wouldn't be a bad question at the next annual general meeting, I think, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Responsibility and uh, that, the, that the coaches have, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, well, just uh, just quickly. Yeah. Let's finish on a positive. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll finish on a positive. Yeah, well, to to Carlton right now. Um, the year looked just, gone, didn't the it? The squad, the coaching department, all of that. How's it looking like from your like you, you've been there? Oh, an outsider though, Rocco. Yeah. It's, it's really hard for me to see because yeah. I don't don't know the inner workings. I haven't been paying yeah. much attention. I go to a couple of games a year, and that's yeah. it. You know, I right. watch them on telly and stuff. But um, to me, Do you when I watch like them, the, just quickly, the way 
like because two years into like Voss's tenure here, so is that a good start? Yeah, kind I think of so. Fell away, and I, my perspective is maybe they try to adjust a few things and went too far one way, and and now they've they've come back. Can you see how that happens? You know what I, I think, mean? Like I think more, it's not so much the structures and things. I reckon it's more around the confidence of the players. Yeah. So they. St started last year and they concentrated on, I think they concentrated on defence or something, I've obviously mm. made that very public. Yep. Um, and they wanted to add pieces of the game yes. to it, and I think that's what you're getting to, Rocco, yeah. around adding too much too quickly. No, I, yeah. I, don't kn I, I don't know, I'm just guessing. No, no, right? of course. I'm just guessing. They, because they started well, remember, this yes. year. They started well in playing some good footy. For some reason, and if you could, if you knew, Mm. Then you'd win every game yeah, of football and we'd be multi, multi yeah. millionaires and wouldn't be <laughs> worrying about it. But for some reason, they lost confidence, I reckon. Yeah. And they were playing, starting to play inhibited football. Yeah. By inhibited football, I reckon through my tenure with all these co change of coaches, our players were playing inhibited football. So each new coach that came, I said, the guys are playing inhibited football. You've got to release them. You've got to make them get, con you've got to give them confidence to play good footy. You right. start playing for yourself in a way. Yeah, and you get and and, and instead you, of team. Not even that. You you are too scared to play because for fear of making a mistake. All right, give them license to be yeah, daring. Right. That's in right. other words, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. Just try. Who again. cares? Yeah, just go. Just yeah. go. Don't think. Yeah. You know, just go. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. And right. that's what and I've noticed. I I felt that they got in. They lost a bit of confidence, and it's really tough. Yeah, and you know what. Gripper and Doc might be looking at this and saying, what the fuck, he, he's got no idea. And I'm just guessing. This is yeah, just what yeah, it looked from like. from the outside, like we all do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it looked like they lost their confidence. And I know internally, mm. I do know this, that um, the coach and the leadership group what, were talking to everyone saying, right, we've got to release the shackles. Just, we've got to go and play. We've got to go and play. And they're trying to find ways to get their confidence and just go and play. And yeah. it yeah. looks like they've found that yeah. now. They, they've been able to work through that difficult period. Yeah. And... They won a couple of games, and that's led to a bit more confidence. More and building. yeah, and build more. Build. That's, that's not to say that that's not to say they're going to lose. They might lose another yeah, three, and three in a row. Again, you know, yeah. it, it goes a little yeah, bit like this until you, and it, you just hope it goes like this. You know? Do you think that Essendon game, and it wasn't particularly that Essendon game, but we lost badly. It was the sixth loss in a in a row, and then the team gets berated by those supporters, which. I've, I've stated that I don't agree with a lot of that, but yeah. there was some berating. And um, do you think, like, almost a line in the sand with the with more so the the players too? Like, has that ever happened to you where you sit there and you go, "What is going uh, on?" I, th mate? I think, yeah, uh, you do. But then, you, if it doesn't work, then there's another line in the well, sand. There's, and line there's, the sand. there's always a line <laughs> in the sand. Yeah. But it's you know, it's I agree. I'd certainly, you know, I think I, I saw the end of that. I, it was on the highlights yeah, yeah. or something. I thought that's just terrible for no, the players. Terrible. Well, they only terrible. played thirty-three. They only had thirty-three tackles for that game. Yeah, yeah. And, and got beaten now. badly by by a traditional rival. And I think that was our eighth loss in nine weeks. And I think everyone had just had enough. Yeah, they does. weren't seeing any improvement I from week to week. I don't, no th I don't think it gives anyone an excuse to um, lean over the race and start spitting oh, at them I'm and throwing out. throwing no. membership cards no, out no, no, and, no. and carrying on like pork chops. No. You got to remember, no one goes out there to lose games. No, no one goes out there to not try. No, um, of course But not. if you've got a whole lot more confidence, it works. You, your body yeah. moves a different way, and your and mind you moves a different it, yeah, way. And yeah, that's right. And they've. Mm. It looks like now they're playing with a, a bit, fair bit more confidence. Yeah. And yeah. you know, touch wood, they they keep that confidence. And yeah. I, I think that's a. We big make the finals. How far do you reckon? We I think that's get? a big part of where we've been the last twenty years. Yeah, that's you right, know, you're right. we've been playing inhibited football. Yeah, and it's, you know, we, it's almost a bit of a woe as me in a sense. You know, yeah, been yeah. playing inhibited football for a long, long time, and Vossi's got them up and running last year and start of the season they've hit a, yep. down well, patch and they, it yep. seems as though they lost their confidence again and hopefully we can get it back. Now, yeah. right, now we've, well, we've got, got it back. back so I should so say we've got it back if we can keep going yeah, then that'll be great. Going. And we've got like to, to me. We've got the list, like, there's always going to be some more adjustments, with yeah, it, yeah. always, you know, yeah. but we've got the list, and we've got the best player in the competition in the forward line, let's be honest, man, to get a big man like Charlie that. Charlie Kerno, he's a star. Teams like North Melbourne that are built around one player, yeah. you know what I mean? So, 
as long, as long as I can get it to him. Of course, yeah. of course. And we have, we, we got it, we, the rest of it, you know, like back line, you, mm. you're, you were a backman, like the back line, like yeah. with Weedering starting to look like he's getting that leadership. Yeah, Weedering's a good player, super player. You know, player, yeah. Newman yep. plays that, your kind of role maybe a little yeah. bit, yeah, he's yeah. playing that role. No, they've he's, got a good team and, and they good. will have to add to it, they'll have to add to oh, it, like, like we did in 93, 94, 95. Always, if you think that this is it, yeah, no, then it's, you're done. It's got to keep growing, it's got to keep growing with some good, good talent. So. Sadi, of course, is going. Sadi, uh, look yeah. looking good. McGovern, you know that intercept mm. mark. Marchbank has come back. Brody, yeah, I was, I was, I was so rap, happy rapt to see Marchie back. Yeah, it's you good know. when you see that. Marchie's a very, very good I footballer, know. and he's been I agree. decimated by injuries. And he's a class I was, player. I was so pleased to see him back mm. last yeah, week. It's, it's good to see when when those long term mm. injuries. And yeah. Cunningham was the other one. Yeah, I think he's made a big difference. Yeah, that's right. So after we win the premiership this year. Well, I actually have had a, conversa a few conversations at the end of last year with diehard Carlton supporters and they get a bit shocked by my conversation. I say, I was actually really pleased that they didn't make finals last year. Which gives them a bit of... Because if they'd made finals last year, the expectation would have grown enormously. Yeah. That they would, would, have had to, had, would have had to have finished in the top four this year. Yeah. And if they didn't, that would be a, co a failure. Yeah. And then what happens at Carlton? The coach goes, and yeah. then we go Just back. Like what happened to Brett Ratton in 2012? And then we go back again, yeah. right? And then we got to build up again. Yeah. And so I was actually really. It sounds terrible. I, I can't remember. If I've told you. You weren't displeased that yeah. we didn't make the finals. Yeah, that's right. That. I think. I think. For the long game, it was better off it's that we best, didn't. Yeah. We just missed. Yeah, that we just missed. Hopefully, because we were playing well, right? And also we were playing really well. We, uh, yeah. we played a great game against Melbourne. Yeah. And Melbourne were a very good football team. We should have beaten them. And Collingwood. probably should have beaten. Them. And we, we played a, we played a great game against Collingwood, and we probably should have beaten them. But yeah. they were a very good football team as well. Yeah. Um, and so not to fall in, I thought was actually, you know, and we had thing. not trained for those. Um, for those moments when you you know you got two minutes to go, you're holding onto a lead. We hadn't had any practice or match well, simulation. I'm they sure even, they, they even talked about the fact that they hadn't had any match simulation. They might do it at training, but I'm sure they, they hadn't had it in games. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. they've had it now. Listen, hard times make strong men. That's strong right. men make easy times, <laughs> man. We're starting to get the strong men, and I'm telling you, the easy times are coming, mate. <laughs> He's talking about men. Can I just? There's never an easy time, though. It's oh, man. not in not internally. It's never yeah. it's never easy. No, it's no, always. No, no. But it, 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 um, yeah. It, it, uh, yeah, it's it's always it's, it's tough. It's, the foot has to be on the pedal the whole yeah. time. I'm not going to let this interview pass without talking about another McKay who gives us all a lot of pleasure yeah. when we watch her play, and your beautiful daughter oh, Abby, yeah. who's played now what 33 games for Carlton. Yeah, I don't know how many she's played actually. But she's, um, I've done my homework. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's it's really and, you know, and now and she's really taking on a, a leadership role within the team. Yeah, too, she is. She? She's in the leadership team now, and she. She missed out on the best and fairest yeah. in the last I thought count. She was going to win the best uh, and fairest last, last game. Year. Uh, last game uh, last year. Mimi Hill just yeah, and, and Mim had a great season, yeah. so she was certainly deserved. So it's really nice to see Abs playing well. Um, She's got a good number on her. It's, and it was lovely to see her <laughs> run out in number five, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's a bit of a proud dad sort of. I was moment, just going to say you must be awfully proud both so, you and Sam. Yeah, of, yeah, of we your are. Daughter. And you know what? We are. We're not super mad footy people. Um, and you know, Ab, it's, it's not the be on end all for Abs either. But sure. she enjoys it. She really yeah. enjoys it. And if if she enjoys it, then that's great for that's us. You know, that's thing. that's the most important thing for us. She's an excellent player. If she's enjoying it, then that's great. And then you know, we've got um, you know, we've got a, a son, middle son, Charlie, yes. and he's he's actually a very good footballer in his own right. And he um, Don't say that, man. I'm getting excited. Man. Charlie. No, no, he's he's not playing. He's actually didn't play this year. He's gone overseas. Oh, okay. He, How old is he? He's uh, about to be twenty one. So. So do you and think then, he's missed his opportunity to go into yeah, AFL? Yeah, the or? Blues um, were speaking to him a lot in his draft year, but mm -hmm. he but they had COVID and he's a, he was oh, a late bloomer course, and things, yeah. and you know, it didn't quite work out. Mm. And then he lost a bit of interest, and mm. um, but he, he's actually imagine having two Charlies up there in the, yeah. in, the in the in the team. And, <laughs> and then we've got a younger daughter who's um, Sophie, who's in year eleven, and right, yeah, she's. Vic Metro and that sort of oh, stuff. So oh, she's taking right. after Abby's footsteps. So she, yeah. So if that's if crazy. if she wants to keep doing it, and, um, then it'd be lovely to see them both play in the same team. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Right. Now yeah. you play, of course, you play with Carlton. Right now you play. How good's that feeling? How good is it watching your daughter? How does it, that compare? Like, 
like oh, watching yeah. your kids. You've got no control, though. Like, no, <laughs> I know. That's a problem. Do you enjoy, enjoy watching it? Play? I do enjoy watching. You yeah. go to the games. Yeah. And get pumped. Well, Sam and I just, you know, you know, supportive parents. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's the only. Touch point do you do I've got. Day, do you do the day costs? You're pumped in the in the box when they do something, or you're a bit. I'm very a bit more reserved. reserved. <laughs> <laughs> but inside, I <laughs> talk to myself a lot inside. Though. <laughs> I can imagine. You're not as reserved as uh, as Stephen Silvani when he's watching Jack. <laughs> Jack kicks a beautiful goal. You know, Joe's up there going like that, and yes. Sauce's like, uh, <laughs> big deal. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're, you're certainly. Um, the exterior doesn't sort of reflect yeah. the interior. What's going on inside? Yeah. 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 Well, Andy. Mate, you played 244 excellent games for Carlton. Fantastic yep. games. I think you kicked, what, only about 28 goals? 28 goals, was? yeah, it was, was 28 right? goals. I think don't worry about that. The bulk of those, I think, were in the first five or six years. You played yeah. most of your career in the back line, and uh, you did it so well. Four times All-Australian? Four times All-Australian. Incredible, yeah. the yeah. patch there that you had through uh, 99, yeah. 2000, 2001. Yeah, exactly, and the That's first... Great. Year in and of course, your first yeah. year in '93, all Australian. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, Carlton nice. Hall of Fame. Mm, Carlton Hall of Fame. And uh, of course, as we said, the best and fairest in 2003, your last year of AFL football. So yeah, you went out a, on a high. It was a lovely journey. It was a great journey. Thanks again for yeah. joining us on uh, the Legends of the Jump. Thanks, Danny. You've, you know, you've, you've got, got, got all those accolades. It's a magnificent, but now you are a legend of the Jumper Punch. <laughs> 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 Which is way more important. Way more That's important right. to us. Right. Go the Jumper Punch. All right. This, is, this has been a wonderful time. We've, we've gone about two and a half times yeah, longer right. than we normally do, yeah. so we'll have to do a part one and part two, I think, yeah. of this interview. No, but but it's, um, been the best. it's been fantastic having a chat with you and catching up. And um, we always finish off our interviews going, Go Blues after three, two, one. You ready? Three, two, one. Go, Go Blues! Battle I'm dead and buried deep within a cemetery I will fight, never weary, I wanna be legendary Till I'm dead and buried deep within a cemetery I will fight, never weary, I wanna be legendary That's all right, I don't work at a fast pace. I'm a steady horse creeping up straight past it. And once I pass you, no one's getting past me. I see people here.